Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and if I sound a little hoarse, it's because I am. I, uh, I've been in a, I spent the last five or six days in a pretty loud environment. Actually, my ears are still ringing, and it's getting hard to, or it's hard to get used to the quiet. How's that? Uh, let me tell you about my trip and what we did. It was pretty fun. I captured some still shots and a little bit of video, and I thought I'd share with you what we did. Um, I got a call last week on Friday uh, from Jim Bollinger over at Do-Right Fabrication. If you don't subscribe to him, go check him out. I'll, leave, I'll drop a link down below to his channel. Uh, I got a call from Jim and he was over in Las Vegas uh, with Lincoln Electric at the BattleBots uh, uh, shoot for the sixth season. And he was in the welding booth and he said they were slammed with work. It was uh, uh, Jim and another gentleman from Lincoln Electric there and it was just the two of them and they were very busy um, they have a very nice setup over there but uh, he said hey how fast can you get here so I talked to the production people with BattleBots back and forth with the on the phone with them and finally got my clearance and my hotel and all that and Vegas isn't that bad for me it's only about a three-hour drive so I just threw some welding gear, uh, you know, my personal welding gear, and some clamps and a few things in, in uh, the car and drove over to Vegas. Well, <clears throat> got there early Saturday, and you know, everyone's seen BattleBots on television, and if you haven't seen them up close, in person, or been in the arena, you're, you don't know what you're, missing it doesn't cover the mayhem and the carnage and the absolute destruction that you see firsthand um, you know we we were able to see these things and these things are flying around these are 250 300 pound robots just flying around and knocking each other around and they don't make they look like beer cans on television you know look like they're made to come apart well they're not you know what they're there's two different trains of thought, and I always thought this was very interesting, because I saw, we repaired an awful lot of battle bots uh, over the, our, our next few days. And uh, one train of thought is heavily armor plated, and they, use, they don't mess around, they use AR plate, and they do uh, laser cut, tongue and groove weldments that are all put together and, and welded together, and they're fairly modular, where you can cut out the welds and replace a section of the weldment uh, when they get damaged or punched through because it happens uh, so armor them up and protect all your innards that's one train of thought uh, and then I saw another couple trains of thought that were pretty interesting um, another one was a, a very heavily plated uh, aluminum uh, it wasn't a weldment it was bolted together but uh, and it, would just, it was made to just absorb all the energy and have these weapons that, that are coming around spinning, spinning hammers and all these other weapons that are coming in, trying to attack the robot, just absorb all that energy in the soft aluminum uh, and stop their weapon from turning within the soft aluminum and have enough aluminum there where they can chip away at it during the fight and still not get to the inner uh, you know, vitals. Uh, so there's two different trains of thought. One is just armor it up and hope they don't punch through or just give them a bunch of soft material to try to chew through that chances are they're not going to get through. Uh, so there's two different trains of thought. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you is a robot called Minotaur. Uh, and I'm going to show you the side plates on Minotaur. And this first, I'm going to show you a still photograph of the gouges from a battle. Okay, now that thing, uh, that side plate for Minotaur was about, I don't know, it was probably a good two inches thick, maybe a little more, two and a half maybe. And every time a weapon impaled itself into that side plate, it would stop the weapon dead in its tracks, and there was a, a chance of them breaking the tip off of their weapon, There's, whether it be a saw blade or a hammer or whatever it is. But, uh, and so it stops the inertia and absorbs the shock, and the robot goes on. Let's take a look at the weapon 
on uh, Minotaur. Okay, now that may not look like much, but that is a 72 pound drum with cutting teeth on two sides and it spins at 1700 RPM. Uh, on the leading edges of the, of the blade, uh, we weld hard facing rod, which is used for agricultural and uh, you know, earth moving equipment for doing augers and drag buckets and things like that. It's, it just give it uh, a hardened edge. So they, we weld hard facing on those and then they grind them to a profile and put a tooth on it. And uh, that weapon there that you just saw was freshened up, but they always come back beat to hell because they were going up against AR plate, AR-30 and AR-50 armored plate with those things trying to chew through them. And uh, so that that's Minotaur. And uh, th so that's one train of thought is to absorb that energy. The other way is to stop the energy with armor plate. Uh, very interesting and some of these weldments came in, the uh, AR plate weldments came in and the entire chassis would be possibly twisted. Um, what we would do is we'd get them down on a welding table and uh, 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 try to counteract the, uh, the twist with some blocks and suck them down to the table with some diamide clamps which have an awful lot of clamping force and we successfully straightened out some chassis. Um, here's, a, here's a view of some chassis, some AR plate chassis that got punched through some corners and we're just welding in some splices. And then here's a picture of a, um, this is actually an aluminum weldament, which is a, uh, this is a weapon arm that got, that took a hit sideways and it racked the whole thing and it twisted it. So we were able to counteract that weldament. I think this was half inch aluminum uh, laser cut plate and welded together, uh, but we were able to straighten it cold. And again, with the diamide clamps, uh, providing the clamping power down to the table, straightening it out, and it was wonderful having a heavy, flat surface to work on over there at the Lincoln booth. Uh, those Lincoln guys were very well equipped. Two MIGs, two TIGs, one uh, aluminum spool setup, which was actually a push-pull unit, and that's how we are able to fill all the, uh, the bite damage on Minotaur uh, with an aluminum spool gun and uh, that thing just fills up gouges and cracks like you wouldn't believe and uh, so Minotaur always came into us after every heat to get get its voids filled <laughs> all right um, and you know we had an arc welder for doing hard facing we had a couple of plasma cutters for cutting AR plate we were able to you know make holes or make notches or uh, do uh, shear cuts and things like that on the AR plate for these guys if they we're in a jam and they had to fabricate a special plate. You know, we were able to help all these builders out. It's free of charge. You know, Lincoln provides this to all the uh, BattleBot builders uh, free of charge. Some guys would come in and weld their own stuff. Other guys would come in and uh, not, know, not know how to weld and we'll do it for them. Uh, but there's some exotic material there, you know. Um, a lot of 6061 aluminum, which of course you can weld. But then there's a lot of the 7000 series, which is the hardened aluminum you can't and uh, you know the, these guys would come in and not even knowing what the alloy was a lot of times and we'd have to make best guess on what to use. Uh, we did get a, a magnesium job in there uh, which is interesting. Uh, here's Jim Bollinger welding up a little bit of magnesium.
So quite the light show with that, you know, uh, the oxide, every time the oxide layer would burn off uh, during that process, it, would, it was a bright green. Um, we had a back purge set up under the table. We were blowing argon through one of the holes up under the table. And then he was coming in from the top with the argon, of course, in the, in the torch. So uh, it was getting argon from two different directions. Uh, you don't want to catch magnesium on fire. Keep it gassed. So uh, we were able to successfully weld the magnesium back for that guy. Um, we did some uh, titanium welding. Uh, some of these guys' bots have an outer skin of titanium, uh, which I, I, that was my first. I was, a, I was able to actually TIG weld titanium for the first time. Uh, pretty fun stuff to weld after you know the rules, you know. Every material has its rules. After you learn the rules, it's no, it's no big deal. So had a good time there. And uh, now they, they did not allow us to film any of the fights. So I have no fight sequences here. Like I said, this is sixth season. It's not even going to air till next spring. But uh, I was away from the ring far enough, and our boy Minotaur was going into the ring, and uh, I caught this. And uh, he won that heat uh, with minimal damage. He didn't even come into us for a, a weapon fill or a uh, armor fill. So he was able to get back on another round without any, uh, without any damage on that fight. So that was good news because uh, when he comes in, uh, I think he owes us about eight spools of aluminum wire by now. Um, next up, you know, uh, there was a day where they didn't have any fighting going on. All the builders, the robots were just racked, and we were we were busy working, but we took a break for a little while, and we were able to get in and actually see the arena. And they, I asked if it was okay to film, and they said yes. So I, I did a walk around the arena from inside the arena. Uh, we were on the production crew, so we were all access, which is nice. We can pretty much go anywhere we want, uh, but they are finicky on where you film. But uh, I did take a walk around of the arena, so let's just. Go look at some of the traps and, and things that they've got inside the uh, BattleBot arena. Okay, well that was a pretty impressive place. Um, the saw blades that come up out of the floor are made out of uh, laser cut titanium. Uh, they want the flash. See, when those, when those bots are fighting, that's why we're seeing magnesium. That's why we're seeing titanium. You know, when tool steel goes up, a tool steel saw blade goes up a t against some titanium armor, believe me, you get a spark show. And it's, it's fireworks, because titanium just comes out brilliant white. Uh, same thing with the magnesium. Magnesium's gonna cause some really good sparks, you know. So the saw blades in the floor, titanium, mainly for effect, you know, and uh, it, but seeing it in person is just incredible. 
Uh, watch, I've watched battle bots on TV forever. And you know, you don't really get a sense of how big the bots are uh, or how small they are, whatever. But uh, here's, a, here's a photo of uh, just pretty much an average size bot. And then here's a picture of a pretty big bot. And this is just the weapons section of, of this large bot. And then uh, now I'm gonna show you a picture of a gyro ball. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the picture up probably three times and zoom in a little bit each time. And the longer you look at it, the worse it gets. Now keep in mind, this was on someone's table over in the builder's area, and this one gyro ball was, uh, I, I think he said it cost them almost $8,000 to build, and there's six of them on the robot. And these are all self-leveling type of gyro balls. And he's got the electric motors out of them, but let's, let's just go look at this carnage. This is some high-tech carnage. And like I said, the longer you look at it, the worse it gets. It's just, and you can see how much it costs. He had the motor and some of the electronics out of it, but that thing was just opened up like a can opener. What took someone 40, 60, 80 hours to build, it got destroyed in three minutes. These rounds are only three minutes. And we saw a lot of our work. Of the, we've seen whole corners of these bots just get chewed off, and it took us hours to repair them and just chewed up in no time. So uh, it, was, it was good to see the carnage and you know, it's no harm, no foul. The guys, the builders don't come back into the welding tent and said, hey, your welds failed. And they just come back and go, hey man, we did it again. We thrashed another robot, so let's, let's fix it up. And we just keep moving ahead. And it's hard not to get discouraged, but these guys don't get discouraged. Uh, we have found a little time on our hands. We run over to Stratosphere. Here's a view from the Stratosphere at the uh, top of Las Vegas Strip. Now you pan around this side, holy smokes. Look at the size of the head on that thing. Bollinger. And on the final day of the shoot, me and Jim Bollinger were able to get in and get our portrait taken right next to the big BattleBots uh, logo up there, which was pretty cool. And we just had a generally good time, you know. Uh, special thanks to Lincoln Electric for sponsoring BattleBots inviting Jim Bollinger and myself over to come help put these things together. Uh, the BattleBots production crew, uh, Julie over there is great. Uh, super fun to hang out with. Uh, special thanks to her arranging all the rooms and the food and just everything. They, they just took such good care of us the whole time. Uh, and we, there was, we weren't lacking for anything, you know. Uh, Lincoln's got a really nice trade show set up. Uh, very well equipped. The machines are first class. All the consumables are there, sitting there waiting for us. We didn't want for anything, except maybe a bigger hammer. We needed some more tools of destruction. But outside of that, uh, they were very well equi equipped. Um, I just wanted to share this with you. I had a great time, wanted to share. Thanks to Jim Bollinger, thanks to Lincoln Electric, thanks to BattleBots, we'll see you on the next one.